do you know what? One of these days I'm going to be really good at this. One day. One day with a bit of practice. Do you know what? One of these days I'm yeah. going to be really good at this. One day. One, one of these days we're going to get this really good. Good evening, everybody. Can I, can someone say whether you can hear me and see me okay? I am so sorry. We've just been chatting away and I hadn't pressed the live button. <laughs> Do you know what? One of these days I'm going to get good at this. Let's just bring Paul straight in. Hello, everybody. Oh. We've had a, a 10, 12 minute chat, and I was like, I'm not sure if they can hear me or see me because I haven't commented about things. So maybe, yeah. Right. So we are on now. We're here. We're, we're, we're here now. We've had a good chat for 10 minutes. So we'll have to go over what we've just been chatting about, oh. and no one could hear us. Yeah. Honest to God, unbelievable. Do you know what? One of these days I'm going to get slick at this and I'm going to be really good at it one day. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for staying tuned in for the last, what, 14 minutes? I'll, I better, I'll have to go through everybody again, won't I, and say good evening, well, Tom's Vlogs, Hitch Up and Toe, Carl Whitehouse, Caravanians. Thanks to Itchy Feet, Lost Weekends, and Graham for Blue Spannering. Uh, who have I not said? Peter Miller. I hope I don't miss anybody. Karina and Jules, here we tow. Thanks for joining us. Go towing the tin. Jane Hook, good evening. I, know, I can't believe we were just chatting away for 12 minutes without realising the... Never mind. Do you know what? We'll get good at this one day. So anyway, where were we? What did we? What, what was the first well, part of the conversation? Uh, the first conversation we had was how excited was I about going in the caravan? And I yeah. said I was extremely excited. That feels a little bit like I don't know. There's so much excitement going on. I can feel it in my chest already about just getting out and going somewhere different rather than the beautiful Gateshead, which is beautiful, but a different scenery. I just can't wait to get away. I can't contain my excitement, but I've got to wait yeah. till May. But anyway, how's you and the family? Is everything okay? Good. Yeah, good. Doesn't seem all right. Um, obviously, it's very different for the children because they're in school and they're not in school and they're live lessons. So, but I think they're adapting well to that. Uh, and we're going away. Yeah, we will just starting again. Yeah, turning the tin. Um, and then we're going away on Friday. So we're going to a site called uh, Embleton Caravan Park. It's a, a pretty much a brand new CL. Uh, so it's got five pictures on. It's in Embleton, Northumberland. Um, and we're just trying to. It's funny because we never really thought about CLs. And the last year we went to a couple and then we sort of pretty much go to CLs the vast majority of the time. Um, and because I've seen them well, it's changed. But before Boris changed his mind again, it was something like you couldn't have the toilets and the shelf cities open, etc. So I thought, well, it didn't seem to make any sense to pay yeah. the money to go somewhere that we couldn't use. And I know I know the caravan club went on the other day that um, I think the toilets and the washing facilities are open. I mean, if somebody thinks we're wrong, we put that down in the chat. But obviously, showers aren't open, I think, until May. But obviously, different sites will have different rules, I imagine. Well, I can't wait. We're just going back to Blakemere again. We've been there a couple of times. We've done a few yeah. vlogs from there and what have you. But um, obviously, we can't bring the caravan out of its winterization. We can't flush the system at the storage because there's no water. I'd end up having to bring so much water with me yeah. in the back of the car. It's just not. It's not feasible. We'll just do it on site on our first week in the way. We'll just take some fresh water with us. Uh, but anyway, I, like I say, we can't get away till May, so we're yeah. really excited to go. I can't I can't wait, to be honest. Um, so I take it the new caravan's ready to go then? Yes, that question. <laughs> yes, um, I well, think it's ready to go. Well, let's go over what we were talking about for 10 minutes. Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, the caravan's ready. Um we do want to have an external gas point fitted. So it's going for a service, I think, on the 28th to like a proper, like a barely approved engineer. Um, so it's going out to get that done because obviously we're putting the hole in the side of the caravan. I wanted it done somewhere that was barely approved so that it still covers your warranty. Some 
Um, I don't know what the exact rules are, but I think sometimes if you get it done by something that's not approved, that they might not cover the warranty. So we're getting that done, fitted on there, and we're getting the service done as well. Although when we bought it, we had it fully checked anyway. Um, so it hasn't long been fully checked, but fingers crossed nothing's um, gone funny since it's been sat there in, I don't know what it was, but mid-December, I can't exactly when we got in there, or start of December, I can't remember. But yes, very excited to use that as well. We've had two nights in the sofa, though, um, on just outside the house. I'm just reading the uh, the chat. Someone's put the mighty Liverpool FC are playing tonight. I know of all the nights Paul could have chose to do this. Basically, he sent me a message saying, here are the options. And I, well, because I, I was away on Friday, I would have done it from the caravan on Friday. But because obviously we're in the middle of Northumberland, I don't think signals could be very good. So I thought that's no good. And I thought on Thursday night, I'll be getting the caravan ready for going away on Friday. And then I thought, well, why don't we say Wednesday? Because as people may know from my sins, I'm a Sunderland supporter. So I don't even, I'm not even that bothered by football now. It's League One Who? football and go nowhere. Exactly. Who? <laughs> it's like, it's getting like Accrington Stanley. If anybody's an Accrington Stanley fan, I apologise. But that's what it's getting like, the advert, isn't it? Who are they? Yeah, everybody, everybody's heard of Accrington Ac 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 <laughs> Stanley. I can't yeah. even say Exactly. 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 I can't, do, I can't do the accent, to be fair. But, uh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I noticed. <laughs> You're so the northern lad. I, I can't believe I didn't press live. I can't believe that. I'm never going to live that down now. You do realise. Well, I, I can guarantee you won't live it down. Yeah, that's true. Phil, Phil won't let it lie. Martin grew. He won't let it lie. That's what I call him, by the way. I call him Gru from uh, the <laughs> on me. No comment. No comment. And I'm bet you, I'll, I'll guarantee Claire Gray. Claire Gray. What do you know who she is? She she said she didn't want anything to do with tonight. She was going to keep uh, Mike yeah. occupied. And In case you say something, you shouldn't. You'll never walk alone. Well, like a 3 0 win for Liverpool. Oh, that would be nice. 3 0. A grief on here, throwing the pins, sending me abuse because we're a Charlton fan. That's how a bogey team is. Uh, Caravan in with the Westies. This is, have they joined us as well? They have as well. Uh, I think they found out we're actually on now. So I thought we'd come and watch. <laughs> well, just watching the, the logo. I'm never going to live that down. That's so embarrassing. 12 minutes gapping away to nobody. And nobody really commented, so I was like, oh, maybe it's going fine. And no one said, I mean, I know Caravan Vlogger said it, but that's just Caravan Vlogger's general like banter, really. I thought he was just joking a bit, but uh, he wasn't. Wait, wait until the virtual tomatoes start getting thrown. <laughs> well, I haven't got any thumbs down. Although there is 37 people watching, so, you know, some people could give some thumbs up. Yeah, some thumbs up. That would be nice. Yeah. Uh, so where were we? Did we, did, did we ask whether Frank was going? We did, we did. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether it came on the live, so we'll go through it anyway quickly. Um, I'm still hoping to go to France. I know that's absolutely ridiculous and not going to happen. Um, we've still got... We've delayed the Euro tunnel because they've agreed that. We've... The caravan site, I think we'll get the money back after a while, like 18 months or something. I don't know whether there's a loss in translation with the French. The only people who don't have the money back, and it's not really directly their fault, is the caravan club through p &O won't give any money back and they won't move it at the moment. I mean, they might do now, but I mean, if that moved, that would make it easier. I mean, I feel a bit greedy because we've actually booked a site in Norfolk as well, just in case. Because last, I don't know if anybody knew last year, last year we were sat in, well, I was sat upstairs, we had everything ready, thought we'll get an early night because it's a, a good seven hour drive from here down to Dover. And then basically what happened was that... Um, we was we were kind of sat ready to get going, and then somebody texts us at like nine fifty five. Obviously, seen the news. Obviously, check the news. Oh look, we can't go to France anymore. So the next day, I spent the first half a day just ringing people saying, "Do you have any space?" So we ended up going to Scotland, which was beautiful. To be fair, it was. I knew it would be nice anyway, and the weather was pretty reasonable. But we just couldn't get sites. I mean, it was fair enough because we were asking for the next day, "Can we come?" And they were like, "Well, no, we've got no space." So, so it was a bit of a pain. Claire and I, we keep talking about France, but there was so many things that like worries us and yeah. um, puts us off. And it's it's uh, when when Graham did his vlog on um, you know the cost of it. I know Claire and I, we we probably just stick to the northwest coast, you know, to visit all the uh, World War Two beaches and all yeah. the and things like that, because that's something that interests us both. 
Um, but we were just worried about you know all the toll roads. I think like that. it's one of those things. where I think I think a lot of things. Obviously, caravan vlogger likes to spend a little bit of money. So, <laughs> but anyway, anyway, but I think you, you can't go cheap, cheap because you're still going to pay for the ferry. You're still going to have to probably pay for tolls and petrol. Although you're a little bit further down the country than us. But I think you still can go cheaply if you get the right sites and the right stuff. Um, our first year, we went like all mega because, you know, Lucy wasn't that big a fan about not having the caravan, but we used it to go like abroad, abroad. And I was like, well, we need it because we've got three children. Um, and we just looked at the price of like a, a week in in anywhere when it was like three and a half, four thousand pounds. I was like, oh, well, I'm not paying that. So my parents had been there. We, we decided to go and... But we paid silly money the first year. We paid like 50 something pounds a night. You know, that's like not heard of for me. But I mean, honestly, the site, uh, Camping Park de Fibois, near yeah. Tours, was stunning. It was absolutely immaculate. And that's the best toilets I've ever seen. But obviously, it was a lot of money. Then we went to Disneyland. That obviously cost about well, Disney, whatever it's called, spent a bit of money there. So I think you can. You can go to like sort of quiet uh, municipality sites, which are a lot cheaper than going to like main sites, but it depends what you want. See, I, I, I looked at the ferries for this year and they looked really expensive. And when mm -hmm. I spoke to Graham, he says, yes, they are expensive. They've doubled from last year. <coughs> Sorry. It, it kind of like, you know, <coughs> I just hope it's not like that next year because we would like to, to really go for well, it. Well, we had that, yeah, because we've obviously got a voucher from through the caravan club for p &O, And we last year, they come back from France before all that cancer, it was £161, I think, give or take. So we looked at getting the ferry again this year, and it went up like 280 So pretty much we were paying, like, again. Do you know what I mean? I mean, we actually looked and thought, if it was the case, I would actually pay for the, the tunnel, because at least for the tunnel, it's probably safer due to the COVID restrictions. That like you can, I know you have to sit in your car now, you can't go in your car anymore, I don't think. But at least you can just sit in your car for half an hour and get out, where, obviously, when you're on the ferry, which I really enjoy going on the ferry normally, but in COVID times, there's a lot of people to mingle with. I don't know. And you've got to wear a mask for a good hour and a half, which isn't pleasant, but it's just one of the things. So we were thinking about actually booking Euro Tunnel just to, if we had the vouchers, just to not go via the ferry, just because we didn't want to, I don't know, like it's a lot more people going to be on there, I would have thought. See, I, I, know, I know why I chose a caravan and caravan holidays is because we, we were a family of five as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, my daughter's now moved to the other side of the country. Josh has just moved in with his girlfriend. Yeah. So we're, we're down to three. Was that the main reason why you chose Caravan over? It's a, yeah, it's a real funny story because when I was younger, um, my stepdad and my mum um, and my sister used to go caravanning. And they used to have, I think they had a couple of different caravans. And they went everywhere. They went to France as well, which is partly where the idea came from. And I went, I think it was once or twice. On the occasion I went, I slept in the awning. <laughs> All I could say was that in the awning, it was either red hot when the fan heater was going, but as soon as the fan heater cut out five weeks later, you were like, so it didn't really appeal to me that much. Um, but then when we knew we were having the third child, I was like, well, how much is it going to cost us to go away? Because we used to go, like, normally during May half term or October half term, because we're cheaper than the May in six weeks. And I just looked at the cost. It was like three and a half, four thousand pound for a week, and I was like, I, I just, I, I couldn't justify that. Um, I, I mean, a little bit later on, um, my actual father he passed away, um, and he left us not a lot of money, but he left us a little bit of money. So there was a few things that came together. There was having another child and the cost of that, because a lot of places won't put you all in one room. There were two rooms. There was a thinking about the fact we can get away with a lot more of the caravan, and as you probably know, our strap line is caravan time is family time and caravan time is freedom. Um, and also, just uh, I just like getting away a bit more. And the thing is with France, and if nobody's ever been, it's like being abroad, like as in like a, a full-on beach holiday if that's what you want, or if you want to go and see, it, it is very similar. The only main difference I find is that it's a very, for us personally, it's quite a long drive. You know, you just take a while and, and you do get a little bit tired from that drive. I mean, obviously, you're probably used to long drives because that's your, your day job. Um, but, yeah. I mean, for me, like, seven hours down to Dover, give or take. And then you're talking seven, eight hours to get the Loire Valley for us, so give or take. Right. It's a long time, but it's part of the journey, but it just takes a while. That was going to be one of my questions, was uh, does Lucy drive? And does no, she not at all. 
she does drive, but she just she she's um a little bit younger than me. So therefore she well, I haven't I had to do my B plus E, so she would have to do her B plus E. Right. Um, so she wouldn't want to do it really. And it, she's not even the biggest fan of driving longer distances. Um she'll drive like around the houses because that's what she does as a job. But she doesn't really like driving long distances, and I think that yeah, I don't think she'd want to do that. I mean it would be good actually if you could drive for an hour sometimes. So we've done that. Well, Claire passed when she was 17. I was a, I was a bit slow on passing me test. I was 31 when I passed me driving. Yeah. So I, I left it quite late. So I had to take me B and E as well. Right. Which is a good experience, to be fair. It, it did prepare me quite a bit. So, um, I mean, reversing was fun, but you just get used to it after a while, don't you? you get, I mean, like I've... The other day, my motor mover remote decided the battery had died. I thought it had kaput completely, but I hadn't. So I had to reverse it into the into the uh, storage bay, but it's really narrow, and they've got these poles either side, so that was good fun. But it, I got it in there eventually. It's just very hard with a twin axle trying to get it to turn precisely into the into the uh, bay. And I've got, a, like I said, I have a mover, but it, not much use about the remote working, which it is working now. So, Well, you know the, um, the reverse and exercise on the B&E test? Yes. That is exactly the same reverse you do in a bus when you do your bus test. I'd imagine it would be different, but e not easy in a bus if it's all one piece. I don't know. Is it? It, it was not? very, very familiar. The only difference is you've got that pivot point in between right. the, the yeah. train and the car. Well, what happened to my B&E while, while we're here, I might as well tell a few stories, is um, I'd, I had a Peugeot 508. That's one of the reasons we actually got the car van, because I already had a tow bar. It already had it fitted, and I just never clicked on. It was under the... Underneath and one day I saw it and thought, well, I'm not gonna have to pay a five hundred pound or whatever it is to get a, a, a tow bar put on. And when I did my, I did all of my lessons in that twin tow and a twin axle, um, like <coughs> trailer with a big water carrier in. And then it came to the day of the test, and the electrics didn't want to work for some reason, so I had to switch over to this guy's Duke. I think a one point six engine. It was totally different, but I, I just got a bit apprehensive that. that Apparently, the lady I had had a nickname. She's called the Ice Queen because she's very straight and she's, she often fails people as well. So I was like, oh, she is. Uh, but she was, do you know what? She was absolutely lovely. She was like really supportive and she was like, everyone said that she could be a bit tough. But she's been having a good day. And she, I mean, I, I did the reverse. I thought, oh, I'm going to hit, because you've got the cone, haven't you? You've got to get around the cone. And mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to hit that cone. So I stopped. Um, and I said, can I get out? She goes, yeah, of course you can get out. So I got out and I looked and then I went, right, okay. I thought I can't do it again because you only let her get out the car once. So I reversed, I reversed it and I got it into the bay. And I said, I know I'm not allowed to look again, but I don't know if I'm far enough back. And she goes, Well, do you think you are? And I said, Well, I'm not entirely sure. Can I go and have a look? She said, Yeah. I said, I thought you could only do it once. She goes, No, you can do it once at the pivot, but she said, actually, you can get out at least once to make sure it's in the bay correctly, because that's what you would do if you were towing a trailer, you would check if it was in the right place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and she um, and I, I checked it, and it was like it was probably be about there, but I just wanted to make sure. And it was the same with the check. You know, you have to, you have to check the trailer, pretend to take the first time you've seen the trailer, and you check the tires, and you check the marker lights, and you check for all that kind of shaman. And I was very thorough. And she went, "Come on, let's get on then." She, she just wasn't bothered. She just said, "Come on, let's get in." And I remember stalling at one point, thinking, "Oh, that's to be failed," because it was a different clutch obviously on the car, and I was on a bank, and it moved a tiny bit. And I looked at her and she just didn't flinch. And I thought, she's given nothing away here. So I did the rest and it won. She was really good. because some. I think the thing is that people need to realise with B plus E, my driving teacher told me this, is that they know you can drive. You've passed your test. They're yeah. fairly happy that you can drive. They're not testing your general... T you don't have to go back to you know get the full wheel and things. They weren't that bothered. But was, they, want, they, want you to, they want you to pass unless you do something ridiculous. I was a bit nervous about the B and E because oh, it yeah. meant so much to me. Yeah, I thought I, I can't, I can't fail this. But then I thought, well, I, I told them that I drive a bus for a living, so <laughs> I, had, no. I should have said that because I added more pressure to myself because yeah. being a, a professional driver. Yeah, I was. I, I, I thought if I fail, I'm going to look really bad, but. Fortunately, two very, very minor errors, and I, and I, and I passed the B&E. So. I don't know how I got, yeah. But even, like, there was one point I was going past the school, so I was doing 20, thinking it must be 20. I didn't, I hadn't caught it because I was checking my mirrors, because you have to check your mirrors a lot more, obviously. And I thought, have I just, have I missed the speed limit? Well, I'll do 20. And the, and the lady went, what are you doing, 24? And I went, what's next to a school? 
you're right, it is, but it's an advisory speed limit, so let's do 30. So she was lovely, and she didn't even put that down, you know, it's just... Yeah, it'll be in black. I think black. she realises, yeah, because it was in black instead. Because I, I had to do my test at Newcastle, and I'm not used to driving around Newcastle. Uh, the city centre, yes, but not around the outskirts, so um, it was just different, but it was a really good experience, and it did cost a bit of money. I think it cost me about £500, maybe slightly more by the time I'd done my lessons, and I put myself in for my test and got it all, but... I think it was invaluable, like all them things. That would, even things like checking the jockey wheelie would go off and making sure that the thing was on and the order you do things in to make sure the caravan doesn't disappear somewhere. So. Uh, come on, Ian. Uh, I'll need a shave soon. When, when did he write that? Is that when we were uh, talking <laughs> missed about that. live? I missed that. I'd just come up there. I'm just going through the comments. Oh, yeah, put up a new awning. Yeah, I, I, well, we, we just took it to Blake. Me and we went for it. I don't think we made that much of a show of ourselves. But we, yeah, we, well, that, that's a thing to talk about. We've now got three awnings. <laughs> I've just bought another one. I've just bought a little porch awning for the you know, wet weekends when we know yeah. it's going to be really bad. Yeah. And just somewhere to clean the dogs off before letting yeah. them in the back in the van. Yeah, well, we've got a, a 390, which we bought originally, which is great. It's a great awning. It's heavy, but it's a great awning. But it, it's not a chew on to put it. It just takes a while. I know some people, I know obviously the caravan nut, I once saw him online said it was part of the holiday experience and he really enjoys putting his own up, apparently, uh, Martin. Um, but for me, it just, with the children as well, I just, I just want to get set up. I don't want to be spending like another half an hour putting that up. So we've got a 260 Air, maybe sort of what you're thinking about. That's good. That's good for weekends. Um, and then... I wanted something so we could just, as we were going away, just get it out of the side, you know. And so we've got an, a caravan owner store that we got second hand. So we're living by our our rules generally, trying not to spend too much money um, just to put on the side because it means that again, if it's you know, it's like again, if it's windy on the night time, you you're lying in bed thinking, should I get up and take the awning down? Should I leave it? And then after you, then you spend an hour deliberating. And eventually you go, let's go, into, and it's lashing down outside. <laughs> you know what it's like. And you go out there, and you, you run this big awning up at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Do we have to talk about up. windy weather? Because Claire still hasn't recovered from Cornwall. Two storms oh, yeah. and a howling gale. It, 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 she, almost, <laughs> she said at one point, I want to go home. Well, she, we've, yeah, was, we've had, yeah. Well, we've had, even had a bit of damage. We had a, a small porch on and the one that we had on the old, for the old caravan. And it was, it was not a bit of wind. It was like dead settled. So I thought, um, <laughs> put my hand in your pocket of the car over there. We need some of his big money. Um, but basically, what I, I, you know what it's like? You get a new toy, you want to use it, don't you? I don't know if that's everybody. but So I got this on. I thought, I want to put it up. And it was dead calm. So I, I got it up. And as soon as I put the on and started putting it on up, this wind came from n nowhere. So hopefully Claire's not listening. So, and it decided that it had, I put a couple of the corners in. Took them out and bashed aside the caravan. Did it end but, up on the roof? No, it wasn't. Fortunately, I managed to catch it, but one of the pegs had pulled out and didn't at the front of the caravan, which I wasn't very best pleased about. But that's why I've got a GRP caravan now, just because we're children have, and just get things all the time. I have to pick up camper air audience because I can't believe it was still standing after yeah. all that wind. That we were a bit foolhardy because we really went against all advice about <laughs> taking it down, but. I thought to myself, it's all our summer setup, you know, because we're there. Yeah. For right? We had everything. Yeah, yeah quite a bit of stuff put in the awning. Where we were going to put it all, there was nowhere to put it, so we no. were a bit cool hard and we, we left the thing up, but well, we, we only we only managed to lose one little plastic clip, so uh, we did quite well. Well, in Scotland, it was really windy this year. Just I think the site wasn't ideal because it was a bit higher up, and next to I mean, the amount of awnings blessing I got. And Claire's probably listening, thinking I'm not going to have one again. And they were just, they were just over the top of the caravans. They were like blown off to the side. They were just, it was de decimation. But and even the next door had an air awning, and I got up and thought I'm just going to put a bit more air in it just to make sure it's okay. And it literally withstood everything, and, and it didn't move. It, I was worried. The only thing it did do was because you've got the poles, the air tubes going inside the caravan, it marked the paint a bit. But I got a little bit of polish and it came ah, out of the bottom. You should have bought the little square pads. It stops all that. 
Well, I could have spent too much money. They're about that big. Mm. And they fit between the, the, the tube and, and yeah. the caravan. Stops that. It keeps them yeah. st- keeps them in the same place as well. So while we were what while we were there in the windy weather, we had the the side window open where our bed is, and we were sat in bed and we were looking across to the tent field. Yes. And all you could see is flashlights pretty much most of the night. And we, it was at that point that we realised we'd made yeah. the best decision <laughs> by the caravan. caravan. Well, and been in the tent. Yeah, but before we bought the caravan. I thought about buying a big air tent. Um, and like I've got hair fever and asthma quite bad. So the wife was like, you'll literally you'll be wheezing all the time. So I was told that was a yeah, that I was told that was a definite definite no. And then we just had that money from my dad passing away. And I said, I started looking and but it's been great for us being part of the community. You know, the amount of times I talk to people on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, it's it's lovely. See, I think I was destined to have my own caravan because my mum always said, well, she started off with a touring caravan when I was mm-hmm. a tiny baby, but I grew up with static caravans in North Wales and we were there every weekend pretty much all through the summer six weeks. And I, I was like, it was like my second home in North Wales. Yeah. Um, so Claire was brought up with an, an Adria caravan with the door on the opposite side and Everybody thinking they were, they were foreign when they went to Tembe and Pembrokeshire, etc. So she's from a caravan in background, and it, yeah. it it was like when she said it was her dream to have a nice touring caravan. You know, yeah, you got a one. I I I I've always promised that I said somehow I will buy one, and and it, and it got a fancy awning and a fancy windbreak. Oh, here we go! Here we go! All the, the gadgets, all the gadgets, <laughs> just that. Yeah, and yeah. Actually, the, the the coffee van is on here, and normally tell me that I've got an island in the shit, the Seychelles, or nothing. Some he's, accusation. Is that Alan, Alan's working tonight, yeah. so he, he'll probably catch up later on. So, mm-hmm. um, you, you've spent more than me in the last twelve months. Well, more. <laughs> probably with the caravan, yes. Because you bought um, the car as well. Oh yeah. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was a problem. Yeah. yeah that, <laughs> I didn't want to swap the car. I absolutely love Rexy 90 was a bit of a brute to drive, but for a torn vehicle, it was unreal. It didn't matter how windy it was with a single axle on the back, you could feel it. I always find it weird when you see on certain social media people tell you that you can't feel the car on the back, which I always find a bit of a surprise. But it absolutely, it didn't matter how windy it was, I never felt lost to control of the Rexy 90. It took everything. Um, but then we had kept having issues with it and needed a few things to do with it anyway. I mean, I've been doing things anyway, getting the cam belt done and all that. And then it, we came back from somewhere and it just started having another engine stuff required. And it was about two or three weeks before France. I thought, because again, I didn't say about France. Last time we were in France, apart from losing the keys on the pitch and having to drive a five hour round trip. <clears throat> oh, yeah, that was my fault. Apart from that one, <laughs> apart from that one, we the, the, the car started having DPF problems. So we drove. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, go on. Let me rewind that one. Do you want to go over the, the key story as well? The, the key story? I heard this. You know, you know watch that video. I'll send, I'll send you a link. No, we, we basically went to France and we're at a, I think it's called, I call it Troyes, but I think it's Trois. It's actually pronounced not, not quite the same as three. And we basically got a thing set up. We got it all packed away, et cetera, et cetera. And then we drove away, as you do. I even got a film of me driving away. Um... We drove for two and a bit hours and then we pulled over to have some sandwiches and wanted like the airs and uh, got out the car and got to the caravan and um, okay. Oh, the keys must be in the back of the car. Oh, the keys aren't there. And then I went, have we got spare keys? Well, I think we had one at that time because it didn't have a full set of spare keys. At least he went, oh, yeah, they in the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. This is why you should follow me because I have lots of issues. So you can. They all generally just have many issues. Um, so I was like, what can, what can we do? So I even tried to get some to go under the rubbers to try and open the windows to get in because I thought at least they could send it back to the house and we just we just wing it. You um, should your channel name to caravan and how it shouldn't be done. Exactly. People would watch that. This is how not the caravan. No one's um, done nothing. So then what I had yeah well. Yeah, so then I had to drive back. I mean, I, so I mean, Lucy said I'll stay here with the children rather than driving all the way back. 
and I drove on the way back, and then I realised that it gets worse, you know, Ian. It doesn't get, it doesn't get any better. The story gets worse. So I'm driving back, and then I realised that I might need petrol before I get back up. But I didn't have my cash card. Lucy had all the cards. So it gets worse. So in France, this is the weird thing in France, a lot of places don't let you use um, Apple Pay or didn't. You couldn't pay Apple Pay. In England, most places, garages, you use Apple Pay, up to like whatever the limit is. So, uh, yeah, got back there eventually, and the police had been to see why there was a caravan left in this air. That was added to the story. And then we continued, and then when we got to the other place, the caravan DPF started playing up. So we got a last-minute ferry at quarter to 12 at night. And then we drove through London. We couldn't go on the M11. It was blocked. We couldn't go on the A1M. There was roadworks. We had to drive to the M1. And then we drove up the M1, which I've never really driven up the M1 with a caravan, but that was good fun because you've got four lanes and you have to be in the first, the last, well, you can't go on the last one. You went in two or three all the way up the M1. It was good fun. Good fun. I don't think we've forgotten anything because we, we, we on just on normal weekends away, we don't really go that far. So we can always nip back the yeah. things that we have forgot. But I can't remember anything that well, happened. we've forgotten, but. We do forget the odd thing from time to time, but nothing mega. Because we like we're going to do a video soon about like somebody said, what sort of things do you keep in the caravan all the time that are essential? Because obviously, there's a few vloggers have done about essential like accessories, like your locks or whatever the kind of things are. And someone said, well, what do you keep in the caravan all the time that lets you can have a quick getaway? So um, don't pinch that idea. But that's what's one of the ideas to do. Oh, other people could do it as well. It'd be interesting. Other people keep what do they keep in the caravan? That's because we keep things like we don't keep cereal all the time, but if we've got cereal, we'll just leave it in the caravan. Like when it's summertime, and we'll leave obviously tomato sauce in there, not very interesting. Leave a bit of oil in there. We leave some tinned foods in there, just so that it lets us have a quick getaway if we wanted to. The only things that we've got in the caravan is the White Master barrels, mm. and that's about it. For the simple thing is, when we did the checks of whether the Freelander 2 could pull the car up out. Oh, yeah, because it's a big van. Because um, it's, it's a big van. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was like 90%. So we've moved everything of weight into plastic storage boxes. Right. Now we've got three plastic storage boxes that's got everything in, and they yeah. go in the back of the car. Or, mm. you know, I've got the uh, little roof rack thing with, like, the zip bag. Right. Oh, no good. weight goes in the caravan now, so it, it evens itself out. Yeah. But I definitely think my next car is definitely going to have to be a bigger car than a heavier car. Oh, well, that's the thing as well. Like cars are getting lighter over time to save fuel, which is a bit of a. Oh. I know some caravans are getting lighter as well, but there's not many. There's not many tow cars now that are ridiculously heavy. I mean. Well, even the the car's got 190 brake horsepower, nearly yeah. 300 pounds foot of torque. Yeah. Um, it's got a 150 kilogram tow ball limit on it. Yeah. Um, can pull two tons. So the car's capable. It's just that I think we've outgrown it. You know, yeah. we're buying the air awning, the windbreak, the Kadak. We, we just need more space and now. That's the only thing, again, the XC90 had a huge boot. I mean, you just had to get in to get to the back of it. But the Sorento's got a big boot. But again, when you've got three children and you've got to take all their stuff away, it just it just becomes full very easily, you know? I'd, I'd love a Discovery 5, but oh. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to afford it. I one. think there's a Discovery 4 out the window here. Yeah, they've got a Discovery 4. I, I yeah. would like something like that. to just A, it probably drinks drinks a bit too much in my budget. And I just hear some positives and some negatives about them being mechanically, I don't know. Well, just some people love them and have no issues whatsoever, and some people did have quite a few niggles. The Freelander pulls the the the, 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 the challenger like it's not there. It really yeah. does pull it. It's like it's yeah, and it's so steady, so yeah. yeah. Twin axle, yeah. Twin axle obviously helps as well, doesn't it? Stability. Well, a lot of I, I've noticed the difference from going from the single to the twin. I, I yeah. don't think I'd go back now. I think. Yeah. The twin is definitely, definitely more stable. Yeah. A lot more stable. Yeah. I mean, I've noticed this. Yeah, because when you've got an empty caravan, sometimes it can be a little bit more flighty. Some caravans need waiting and to keep them right, if that makes sense. Um, and then I've noticed with that big twin, it was obviously empty when I bought it and brought it up, and it just didn't. 
See, I, I've took everything out of it because when, when we watched uh, Karina and Jules when they weighed their caravan, it just goes yeah. to show how easy it is, you know, to be to be over that MTBLM. So when you weigh up um, your two gas bottles, mm. your quad movers, caravan vlog. Quad movers. movers. Um, and I've got like, quad movers now. Your leisure awesome. battery, you pop, you're probably up to the MTPLM already. Yeah, well, it's even like there's a, a family who are on Twitter, and I hope you don't mind giving them a quick, not really a shout out, but um, the wobble boxes, he weighs everything. And look, I know Martin does from the caravan as well, weighs absolutely everything, and he's got it down to the gram pretty much. I think he bought cutlery that was like a couple of grams lighter, and I think he took his along, and even then, he's got the, um, the upgrade pack, and it's still. You know, like there's still not a lot of spare weight in there. I think people think they've got a lot of spare weight. I would imagine there's a significant number of caravans on the road that probably are over the M MPTLM. But unless you're going to take it to a weigh bridge, you're not going to know you. Yeah, I'm just looking. Uh, Sunderland oh. are actually sec my second team. My son-in-law is from Sunderland, towing the tin. My stepdad's from Sunderland. That a good thing? I'm trying to... He's, he, yeah, he's, all, he's all right. He's all right. Of course. Easterners go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, I can't the where they said sometimes, though. Yeah. Oh, right. it depends. See, my accents change over time because I'm from Sunderland, born and bred. I don't use a lot of Sunderland slang because otherwise people have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but I work in Northumberland, or pretty much, it's for the bottom in Northumberland, really. And that the fact that, like, I've changed my like language a little bit from working with the shoulder there, you know, because they say things differently. Well, like I told off if I, if I say book, is it which one I get told off? If I say book, rather than book, I don't know, little Coop. thing like that, cook as well, curry, rather than curry. Joe and Martin, itchy feet, they say book and cook. There you go. Whereas we say book and cook on this side. In some it's like red, just red, red Chester. Well, it's got no, it hasn't got a chut in, but it's a sunny thing, Redchester. But everywhere else in North, it says register for, Red. the, for doing the vegetable lessons. Oh, then Nicola Robertson, she lives in Newcastle. There you go. Fellow northerner. A real northerner. So in the tin again, a dream of a twin axle. Don't I can fit one around the windy road I live in? I oh, think. like a windy road, right, yeah. I don't know. That's a, that's a thing to think about, like how I don't know. Like it'd be interesting to see how easy or not easy it is to get onto some sites and pictures of the twin. Because you got it's not massive. I mean, the actual caravan we've got now is slightly narrower than the five eight six. It doesn't look at inside. It's one inch narrower. Um, if they've got any tight gates or anything, but some people say to take your stabilizer off as well, don't they? Not not for the whole trip. To, to uh, apparently, if you take you pull your stabilizer, it will let the caravan turn easier. Um, I had a bit of a ding dong with somebody on uh, caravanning clever ideas on Facebook. <laughs> I give up now. To be fair, he was a single axle owner with single movers, but he knew better than everybody else who had a twin axle and quad movers. Well, he knew better than everybody else. We've just we've just got a single on the front of the woman because again we got a second hand. Um, we're waiting to see if they get because the ones we've got you can upgrade them so if they get another one in the right box you might upgrade it and I remember the first time trying to get it even just round the not even massively to turn a bit and it just didn't it was going backwards but it wasn't turning very fast so I had to literally I'm about 14, 15 stone lean on the side of the caravan and basically nudge it and it worked a bit but I wouldn't like to try and do a 90 degree turn on it onto a pitch unless you had a really big swing I just can't imagine that being fun I think people show concern for um, my car. If I can show this picture somehow. Uh, I've got a picture right. here. And I've got another comment there from Jones Clan back in a caravan that we live in Ashton. Or lived in Ashton five five years ago for five years. See, that, that look. if you look at that, my yeah. car was far too small for that caravan, doesn't it? Yeah, but then again, probably still weighs a fair amount because it's a Land Rover. Well, they're like, not, they're not like cars, they're built like tanks. It can pull, pull two tons and it doesn't come up as showing any problems on their on yeah, the well, matching service. And, well, and in fact, it doesn't show any yeah. problems on any of the matching services. To, uh, to be so. fair, people might have seen this abroad, 
But if you go on the content, it seems that it's much more likely that people will tow very big caravans with reasonably small cars. Uh, I remember last year, not two years ago, on a site, and this big, is it a deaf, deaf, deaf? Again, somebody might tell me that's pronouncing it wrong. And it was an absolute monster twin axle. It was about, it was, you couldn't talk in this country about a commercial. It was a monster caravan. It looked lovely. It was a monster caravan. And it was getting towed by a Passat. And the Passat was about one point. So I thought, hold on a second. I looked at the sort of thing and I looked it up. I, just, I think the Passat was about 1.6 or 1.7 ton um, curb weight. I think 1.6. And that caravan was 2.2 ton MPTLM. And I was thinking, in this country, you just wouldn't get away with it. But it's quite common on the continent to see big caravans getting torn by smaller cars. When well, this see, country that, seems that it's that, a bit more of a measured approach. If your caravan did start to wobble, would a small oh. light of car stop it? I, I, look, I, it's, it's wagging the dog, isn't it? If the weight, if the, it's going to just pull it all over. I mean, that's why we got rid of the Peugeot 5008, because it sometimes it felt a bit unstable. Never mega. But sometimes it used to pull and I used to get a bit like when you, when you first start touring, you've got your children in the car and the caravan starts moving. You, you, your hands are red and a bit sweaty and you're panicking a bit. Oh, I did anyway. Um, caravan so, is saying, oh, come on, Paul, put your hand in your pocket. But, yeah. what but actually, to be fair, I did have some savings until the other day. So obviously I bought the caravan store. I then need to buy a new step. I then bought a new caravan cart to go with the caravan on store. I've then bought myself a bag for the waste master. What I bought? I think anything else I've bought recently for the caravan? You've been buying all the vlogging gear, though. As uh, well. Yeah, not not recently. I got yeah, I got the things that don't really work. Yeah, I've got a I've got a teleprompter. Be a drone next. Well, that is on the cards. Because I've been asking the boss, the, well, I say that's my money, but I still get told about how I can spend my own money as a grown man, as you do. I don't and, spend money. It goes into the, the joint account, and that's the that's, last time I see it. Uh, I don't have a joint account for that reason. <laughs> so there we go in a second. I apologise, but he has a go at me, you know. Um, yeah, so we have things, we, we obviously pay things jointly, but um, yeah, so I've been good about a drone for ages. And Lucy's like, you're not getting a drone. You're not getting a drone. So I've just been keep, you know, getting the conversation in. And it's my 40th birthday. Um, um, sorry, go on. And she said, oh, for your um, birthday, do you want a drone? Well, I was like, well, of course. <laughs> but, but obviously it's it's getting the right one because in, in my mind, I want an Air 2 or a 2S that comes out tomorrow. That's what I'd like, the 2S. But... It's a restriction. So I know you can do an A2 of C or whatever, but what you're still you still restricted. And then in two years' remember. time, they might become they might become obsolete meters again, and that's be a problem. And maybe for five seconds of footage, is it really worth at the moment buying a, a one thousand um, pound well, drone? I, I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. I I, I had to have one. Um, Anne Brooks has just put an interesting comment. She said, everyone said it was going to be really busy on the 12th. We didn't find the roads a problem, and yeah. the site has loads of empty pitches. I think it will be quiet until this weekend. I think this weekend is going to be absolutely yeah. chaos. Yeah, but we... I hope just hope it's calmed down yeah. a bit before we go away on the, on the 7th of May. It's how, it's how busy the... I mean, we're very much normally... A family that looks at the weather, thinks it's going to look okay this weekend, or maybe in a bit advance, will go away. We don't often like book things in advance, um, and we, well, this year we're having to book things in advance because if you don't, you can't get in. And we even looked at sort of my birthday is the thirteenth of July, and I thought, well, me and Lucy will go away for that weekend without the children, and we'll go to a nice place that's got a pub, and we'll go to the restaurant. And I rang up the next day, and the lady said, oh yeah, in the past twenty four hours, we've had like five people book pictures. Um, where normally, like last, even even last year, to a certain extent, we could still get pictures relatively late. Um, Phil was on the M62, and it was quite busy with shiny caravans. I think it's because everybody's been polishing them for six months. <laughs> uh, mine needs a bit silky still. It's getting better, but it needs a bit silky on the back to get all off. I've, I've got to wash ours. It's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit dirty. The, the seagulls... And they deliberately oh, said, yeah. "Off me caravan." Well, 
we've moved position in our storage and that was the case before the old part was near the corp i've got like a, um, a warehouse there and they must dump food from time to time and it just it was covered and now we've moved around the corner it seems a bit better it just now you get the, you've got the east coast main line running alongside so when you're recording the video you've got to constantly keep stop talking and then redo it um, this is interesting. Turn the tin. Aren't you awning as a camper pole awning so much easier to put up than the Van Gogh Kalahari air awning? I don't know. I, 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 we had a little bit of a system with our old NR awnings, pole awning. We had a bit of a system. Like, Claire would have one job, I'd have another job. And we seem yeah. to have a system, John. But this air awning, you feed it in, and then mm. the, the, the gale pump does the rest. And then you just pin it out. After it. I think really, it, it can be the weight though, because that, that's my thing with a three ninety. Because it's obviously me on my own. My obviously Lucy's there, but she's trying to like sort the girls out, take some to the park or things while I'm setting up. And it can be a little bit tricky getting it on the on the rail because you've got to keep going backwards and forwards. But once it's up, it's fine. I mean, ours doesn't have a single point. Because I thought about I think about buying a camper. Well, I just had a few condensation, but then uh, yours is fine. So. Top tip for camper awnings, don't drag them because we dragged it by mistake and now we've put a bit of a hole in one of our right. fly screens now. So Claire's got to improvise and put something across it. It's a very talented lady. Well, well that, she's, she's good with the old needles. Yeah. Well, our awning got, our awning got eaten, eaten by a mouse. So we bought, he's going to disappear. So we basically bought this awning, put it up for the very first time. And then we left the caravan there for a week while we're away, came back and this mouse had set up residency and munched the bottom of the awning. <laughs> a brand new awning. I haven't got it delivered to that site because they were lovely. I said, can I get it delivered to the site? Yeah, no problem. Got it there, put it up. Lovely awning, like £600 or something like that. That was a few years ago. And I came back next time, it's got a hole in. Not the end of the world, like, but... Phil, Juliet... They've considered large awnings, but they've stuck to the porch and sun canopy. I suppose it's whatever works for oh. works because if, if it's uh, like Phil and Juliet, mm. they're just a couple, aren't they, on their own? But yeah, uh, when there's more of you, a bit more space going <clears> to <throat> way, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I just like I just got sick of putting the awning up, so that's why we didn't use it. But it would be nice sometimes if it's nice and enough weather to have the canopy, even if it's raining. Or whatever, just so we can have a bit of outdoor space because that's part of the reason you go away, isn't it? To get in the outdoors a bit, um, or a bit of a sunshade, or just somewhere to put stuff not in the caravan because, like you see, you get anything gets trips into the caravan, doesn't it? Hmm. Uh, Phil's not long bought a new car, he's loving his Audi A6 Avant. See, I couldn't go back to a, a well, low sitting car now with my with my arthritis yeah, yeah. and my wrists and my yeah, knees yeah. getting in and out of a, a low car. Now I, I couldn't go back to a, a normal car. Yeah, now. We we thought about getting an Avant A6 because they're quite wide, but unfortunately they've got quite a big um, automatic the tunnel that goes between. It's quite high, so unfortunately it wouldn't work for us. But we did like them, and they're quite heavy as well for for a, a state car. Um. My husband left the remote for the mover next to the jockey wheel, arrived at the storage yard and realised what he had done. Quick call home to the son who found it on the road at the, at the end of the road. God, that was lucky then, wasn't it? I've left yeah. gloves on the hitch and when I've got to site, they've still been there somehow, <laughs> miraculously. Because yeah. you, know, you know your jockey wheel, if you have to touch your jockey wheel or, or whatever, you get yeah. you know, with grease and all oil all over That's you. That's probably why I lost the keys when we were in France. I didn't take them out and put them on the floor. I was the jockey wheel decided it just didn't want to play a ball. It didn't want to like come back up and all sorts. I faffed about it for ages. And eventually I'd obviously been on the floor kicking it and all sorts. You know, that's a technical term, they give it a good kick. And then um eventually decided they wanted to work. But obviously by then my keys had fell out of my pocket, which wasn't very useful. <laughs> uh, reading down disco oh, where's that comment gone? Something about a Discovery 5. I'm interested. I think I did put that on, hadn't you? Because I think Anne and Gary have got a Discovery 5. Yeah, Discovery 5, around 24 miles per gallon when towing. I get 27 out the uh, Freelander, so it's not, re it's not really going to make any dif difference. Um, 
Caravan Pastimes, we have a Discovery 4 and love the space in the back and mm. the towering power. Well, let's see. I'd love one. It's just um, whether I'd be able to find a decent one when my finance is up on the Freelander. So I've got another two years yet. So it's whether I'll still be able to find one with lowish miles. Yeah. Although the only other car I've been looking at is the pickups. You know, uh, do you know Dan from Cars and Caravans? Yeah. He's got a Mitsubishi L200. I've been looking at them as well. I'll tell what you what, you can't. I just don't know whether. Oh, hello. I've there got you go. No, nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a half time entertainment. Nothing to see here, she says. Oh, we all saw Love Too Late. <laughs> um, because, um, yeah. Well, my friend's got a, um, a, a, a VW Amarok with a V6 engine. Uh, it, it moves like nothing. He right. said he really, he really enjoys it. I think Nissan, I mean, I've heard on the grapevine that Nissan Navara's, is it Navara? Whatever their pickup truck is, works quite well because it has got it hasn't got leaf springs on. It's still got standard suspension in. So they might be a bit less bouncy, but I don't know if that's true or not. That's what I've heard in the grapevine from I, people. I just, I just worry about the, the power. I know the torque's more important, but most of the pickups only seem to have like 150 brake horsepower and I'm thinking like I'm saying, if, you, if you get the V6 I think it's 295 <laughs> the, the 295 way. brake um, the, well I don't think the boot's big enough on them is it well you can get, he's got a truckman so it's got like the canopy over the top of the back bit so you've still got like a boot it's fairly big to be fair he's a, he's a photographer so he's got all sorts of gear in the back of there sometimes and how many miles to the gallon are you going to get out of a V6? I'll ask him. I don't, I don't think he's that interested because his other car, right. it just changed to some some VW Polo of 195 brakes. So I don't think he seems to be concerned about miles per gallon. Anyway, I, I know I'm, I'm going to end have to end up with a, a bigger car because, like I say, we've outgrown this one. We definitely need more space now. I told you, XC90, obviously the brand new ones are quite expensive. But an older shape when they're great for towing itchy and, they're, and they're heavy. Itchy feet caravans, you're posh though. Posh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Have you ever been called posh before? Uh, no, <laughs> he thinks we live in the posh part of Merseyside. Well, I suppose compared to Liverpool, it is rather posh. <laughs> I get into trouble for saying that, yeah. <laughs> um, I think it looks like Phil would like a drone, but the boss is saying no. The Bank of Juliet saying that's not going to happen. That's what I'm getting from the chat. Even after, to be fair, he won a prize on Here We Tour, and he got a nice. Um, maybe that's why he got that. What was it? He got a, like a nice uh, basket, didn't he? Maybe that was his plan, but it didn't work. Oh dear! Uh, it was very yeah. nice. I was, I was very impressed. I didn't show my wife. It was, uh, look at look at this. We saw you again, love. Too late. Yes, because my wife ended up with uh, Fortnum and Mason presents, and uh, I think Phil wanted to uh, get one for Juliet as well. But I didn't show. I didn't show Lucy. I think he did a bit of that. <laughs> Flashing yeah. the cash. Ah. Oh. Um, yes, they tow effortlessly, but not economical. Yeah. I used to tow with a Ford C Max two litre. See the. It's just the boot space on these type of cars that when I've looked at them, the boot's been quite small. Yeah, it's like the Freelander. Once, we, if we go away with the dogs, everything has to go on the roof rack. Yeah, oh, yeah, we, yeah. once we put the cage up, there's no room in the boot. I mean, I would if you get a chance look at XC90, it might not be your thing, but they're just absolutely monstrous because they're, they're like 2.2.3 2 tons, um, something like that. Um, it's not the most modern cars inside the older models, but they're great to tour with. Yeah. And you can fit everything in there. Well, not everything, but you can fit a lot in there. Read the comments as well. Yeah, Paul, Caravan Pastimes, Paul, go with the Mini 2. It's fantastic options with almost all the restrictions. Yeah, well, I flew, yeah, because you, yeah, you didn't even fly that over people, can't you, at the moment, because it's still in the bottom bracket. It's because it's under 249 grams. I, 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 I don't regret buying the Air 2 because I'm still going to get two years out of it and I'm hoping yeah. by 
by the uh, the end of the two years, the transition period. I'm hoping we, uh, the CAA and DGI negotiate and be sensible and give its classification. Yeah. So I'll carry on, be, be able to carry on flying it like I do now. Yeah. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I've taken the test. I know what I'm doing. I'm not irresponsible with it. I take yeah. all the precautions I possibly can. Yeah. So I just don't see what the problem is, but it's all the laws are changing because there's too many idiots out there. Well, that's so, the problem is that people are just doing what they want. So everyone else has got unfortunately suffered, it appears. Um, oh, okay. yeah. I would love a mini, but Mrs. Bank manages yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just catching up with the comments. And he said Fortnum and Mason Hamper didn't work, apparently. <laughs> it didn't have the desired effect. I, 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 I didn't hear the last of it. I can't even remember where she got that. I think she got bought it. I think my sister bought it for her at Christmas. Fortnum and Mason. I didn't even know. It was, I'd never heard of them. Yeah. That's how posh I am. I never yeah. heard of them. Um... Um, little... Try forgetting to take your electric lead out and then wondering what that big snaky thing is following you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not the best. I um, I've been selling stuff as well because I don't know what it's like. Because obviously, as you may have heard, I've had several caravans and I've ended up just collecting like uh, waste masters, aqua rolls, electric cables. Oh, we've changed, that's the new thing I've bought. I've changed the, the leveling ramps. So because we're on a twin, and I, I don't want to pay for the lock and level yet, I've got the level the leveling ramps, so they've got the curved off bit at the back. So see if that works. <laughs> Jones clam back in the caravan. Ian, you're posh. You've got nets. It's net curtains. The only reason why we've gone back to neck curtains is because the dogs jumping up at the window destroyed the vertical blinds. And we'd had a couple of quotes and things, but we thought, I'll just get some nets for now. But they kind of stayed because I kind of like them because you can see out, but people yeah. can't see in. Whereas with the vertical blinds, everybody can yeah, see, can't see in. Yeah. Yeah, you, too. you feel like you're being watched. So I quite <laughs> like going back to the to the old net that you know. I said Phil was good Phil was to say good night there. Who's saying good night? Uh, Phil. Phil. Oh, has he got work in the morning? He's probably been told to stop going on about the drone. <laughs> <laughs> it's still not a loud one. Well, we're getting up to the hour now, anyway. So yeah. uh, anyway, that will be on the shopping list of a mini two, probably. I don't know what's on. I don't know what is on our shopping list at the minute. I know Claire keeps eyeing up. It's like an extension that you can add on to the Camper Four Hundred, and it's called the Conservatory. And I'm thinking, Ooh. why? What for? But she says, I like it. I want one, but I, I yeah. can't get one because I can't see the point of it. I the can't only, think. I, the only thing I'd like for the caravan possibly is put the solar panel on, but. We don't go to many places where we'd probably be off grid, so I don't know whether it's worth. I know it keeps the battery topped up over the winter, but I, I don't know whether I'd probably want to go like wildish camp with a caravan. With a motorhome, I understand it a bit more. And if it came with one, I'd be happy to have it. But I'm never going to go somewhere without an electric hookup, or it's highly unlikely. When I first bought this caravan, I looked up on the roof, and it's only got a 40 watt solar panel. I thought, oh, I'll upgrade that to a hundred watt one, but. I don't see the point because the forty watt one's doing the job. It's keeping yeah. the battery topped up, and you know, and we can, uh, you know, boil a kettle and things when we're at the side of the road. It, it it's it's doing its job. So, yeah. do I really need to upgrade it? Not right now. Not yet. Yeah, it's doing the job for now. Yeah, uh, beer is on my shopping list. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I only buy beer occasionally, but. Claire likes her, uh, her Proseccos. Oh. Yeah, I drink Guinness. That's probably about it, really. I don't drink a lot either. It's still nil-nil in the football. I, I'm keeping my eye on it. It's still nil-nil. We need two goals. All right. Um, uh, so did I have any more questions I wanted to ask? <laughs> or already asked, maybe. Um, 
if money was no object, yeah, you know, this one, this was what we can finish with. If yeah. money was no object, what would your outfit be? I Carl, don't know. It's a good question. It depends. Part of me would like to have a go to having a motorhome, but it would have to, for me, it would have to be like a, a swift, contiki, you know, massive thing for the family, really. I don't know. I, th I think I'd. I don't think there's anything on the market that would probably really, really want me to go and buy it for big money because there aren't any higher up caravans for families at the moment, bar the Buccaneer Aruba. And I think they've got another one. There's two of them. They're quite nice. Would you but pay 41 grand for the Coachman Luso? I would not, no. I, I think I've said it's diminishing responsibilities for caravans. If you get the very bottom model, once you pay, once you pay paying brand new for a caravan, 24, 25,000 pounds. I don't think, bar maybe the older West Central Heat, which you can get in some caravans for that money, I don't, I think it's just diminishing returns. I, I, my choice of car is easy because if money wasn't an object, I've always wanted a Range Rover, so I'd have mm. a Range Rover Vogue, the, the autobiography one, the top spec. Mm. I, yeah, if it was, I'd probably, if it was a car, I'd probably have the brand new XC80, the electric version. Um, Caravan, I'd probably at the moment, I'd probably want a Bailey Grandier Turin. I did think about getting a fixed bed, but our budget, to, we need we need the eight foot, and I'm not A, the money, and B, at the moment, I just don't feel like I want to have an eight foot caravan yet. I'd, I'd, I'd probably have a Buccaneer. Probably a yeah. Buccaneer. With the um, bed, the same as Graham's. Oh, God, do you know what? Same as Graham's. I, I don't know what's going to happen over his fan. I bloody um, feel for him. You know, a, a two weeks, what, what was it? Two weeks old? Two weeks. He's had it for two weeks. And then somebody if, didn't stop. If you're still here, Graham, and me, me heart goes yeah. out to you, mate, I, I, do you know what? I'd be beside myself if that happened to me. Yeah. Absolutely shocking. Um, and I think uh, there's the hour. I think we call it a night. Yeah. So thank you for everybody watching and coming along, you know. Yes, thanks very much for chat. that uh, took time out to uh, listen to us dribble on again. But at, at, at least there's a bit of excitement in the air now. Now we can all get away again. Yeah. So Two, two more sleeps for me. Two more sleeps? Yeah, and then we're going away on Friday. And then it's only two uh, weeks after that we're going away again. Uh, do you know what? I've got to wait for another another three and a half weeks. Uh, it's going to kill me. Go anyway. yourself. Well, I can't. <laughs> well, I've got a two-day weekend, the weekend after next, so uh, oh. you never know. I might squeeze something in there. Yeah. Anyway, like I say, thank you to everybody that stuck with us throughout lockdown, and even though we've not been putting an awful lot out vlog-wise... Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, thanks for the blue spanners tonight, Graham, Phil, and Juliet, Joe, and Mart. And thanks very much for Paul yeah, for being a guest on uh, our live chat. Yeah, thank you. So thank thanks you. very much, everybody, for joining. Uh, sorry for the twelve-minute <laughs> delay at the start. Yeah, we've been on, we've been an hour and a quarter. Yeah, Me we've been having a lot longer. Anyway. So thanks, thanks again. Thanks very much for joining us. And until the next video or the next live or whatever the next video is, it's a, a good night and keep staying safe. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, thank you. See you bye. later, Paul. Bye. 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 bye.